Good morning all. Over the last few weeks I've gotten quite a few requests to do a review on the boat I'm fishing off of. So here we go. A couple of years ago my son decided he wanted to duck hunt on the Texas coast so he went in search of a, uh, a John boat, project boat, and uh, he found one. I think he paid $1,000, $1,200 for it. Came with a raggedy trailer. Um, and so he decided he was going to make it his duck hunting boat. Well, here it is. Well, let's start with the boat first. Starting with the boat. It's a 1995 weld built boat. 16 foot by 4 foot wide. Uh, the hull itself, before all the add ons and whatnot, I found the original registration was 195 pounds. We have the light bar. Very important when you leave early in the morning. If you want to not run over stuff in the water or another boat or just figure out where you're going, that light bar is awesome. One of the best things we put on this boat was a Mincota, Mincota Riptide Power Drive. And the awesome thing about this is it's got spot lock. So if you're fishing a spot and you want to stay exactly where you're at, you hit the anchor button and it keeps you right where you are. Um, you can also set it on a heading. Let's say you want to fish a shoreline with crazy winds. It will take you down that shoreline without having to constantly be messing with the um, trolling motor. It's really nice. Uh, when he got this boat, it had a, a wooden floor in it, and it was rotten. It was in bad shape. So he pulled the floor out, put a new plywood floor in, and uh, put the hydro turf on. This hydro turf cuts down quite a bit on, on noise. The one thing I don't like about this boat is if you're trying to drift and it's very windy and you got hole slap that just resonates. So it's not very good at drift fishing in very windy conditions. Just doesn't, doesn't work out well. Um, he's also put a little dry box here that can hold all your stuff that you don't want to get wet. Um, We've tried several different ice chests, but this one seems to be big enough and small enough. Big enough to hold a two-man limit of reds, flounder, and trout. And small enough to be out of the way. Because, let's face it, you're, fa you're, you're on a small boat. 16 foot is, is not big. Um, carry a six-gallon gas tank. All right, so the outboard is probably my favorite brand of outboards now, Suzuki. This is a Suzuki 25 horsepower. It is a DF-25A, it's 2018, bought it brand new. Bought it from onlineoutboards.com. Uh, they shipped it free. Uh, what more can I say? It was not hard to mount. Uh, I did get tilt and trim. Uh, it makes it very nice when you get in shallow water. And if you'll notice here, I have that as high as it'll go. And it works out really, really nice uh, when you're trying to get in shallow water. It's, it's as far as I can go up without it not getting uh, water on the pickups. So outboard stays cool. I also put a tiny tack on it uh, so you can find the RPMs and the reason that's important is is that right there this motor is, needs to run between five and six thousand RPMs on its uh, high-end RPMs the problem running on this is a ten and an eighth by 13 pitch and it runs about 52 5300 rpms um, as you can see these uh, 
pods on the back. We added, my son added these on, he had them welded on. And the reason is that motor is 163 pounds. So it did add quite a bit of weight and it would not have floated real well. It's still a little bit heavy in the back, but it's, it's not a problem. Um, we also have a power pole, which is powered by human power right here. And you can see the pole runs down the side of the boat. Uh, it's a nice little anchor system. Um, I, we, I guess we could get a, an electric one. We just haven't done it. It's not that big a deal. Uh, of course, LED lights. It's the only way to go. I only run one battery on here. And it runs, uh, in this motor, let's face it, you don't have to have electricity to start it. You can pull it pretty easily. Um, and the trolling motor, it'll run all day on this. Um, didn't spend a lot of money on a GPS. Um, this is a Ray Marine Dragonfly. Um, and we're using Navonix software mapping. And it works just fine. Um, fishing in the marsh most of the time, you just need to be able to get in and out. Uh, it does have sonar, but heck, the water I'm, I'm fishing in, <laughs> you really don't need it because you know you're in two foot of water. Uh, don't fish a lot in an open bay. We do occasionally. Um, he, he also put these, uh, I don't know what you call them, they're bags, they're gun bags basically. Um, there's an, you can put another one on the other side over there. Uh, but during fishing season, then we, we just keep one over here. And we can fill them up with plastics and whatnot. Um, we also found this great little, uh, found this great little net. Holds up out of the way. It makes it very nice. What I, one thing I will tell you is fray bill. Do not, um, you have to do something to them. And this is a known problem with them. These have a button on them up here. These have a button on them right here. It's stainless, but it's very crappy stainless. I filled it up this time. This is my second one. This piece will rust in two right here on the inside. It's a little button. They do sell them. Uh, when mine broke on the first one, I didn't even replace it. Don't really need it. My last one, it lasted about a year and a half came apart right here uh, and of course when you fill it up with big redfish over and over and over and over again it it puts a lot of tension on it but it's a great little this is a great little uh, net what's better is it folds up out of the way and you can get it out of the way Set it up under there. you're good to go we also carry a, a pole as you can see here. Uh, don't use it much in the summertime, but in the wintertime, if, you, if you're not wading, you don't want to get your feet wet. It works out really good. So, uh, trailer-wise, there were two things that were non-negotiable for me and my son were you got to get to where you're going, pulling the boat. You don't want to have troubles breaking down on the way to the water. So we bought the McLean trailer. Um, one of the things I had added when we had the trailer made was this swing away. So you can put this thing in a garage if you so choose with that swing away tongue. That doesn't seem like much. Let me tell you, it can be the difference between a uh, $70 boat shed 
and a $150 boat shed right there. Really neat feature. Always get a good jack, always get a spare tire. Gotta have it. This is a McLean trailer. I've known uh, the fellas at McLean trailer for 35 years now, I guess. Uh, we built an aluminum trailer for it. Uh, and I also went with uh, 14 inch tires. You can get 12 inch tires at Academy on a trailer. That's the thing. They spend more RPMs, they're not radial, they heat up and you blow out on the side of the road and it just ruins your day, coming and or going. You don't wanna have, be stuck on the side of the road. The other, other non-negotiable was a good motor. It just does not make good sense to buy a junk motor. Spend the money, uh, and you just don't have problems with it. Suzuki's are bulletproof. Um, I've done all the maintenance on this so far. I've changed the impeller. I, I've only done 100 hours so far. It'll be about another four or five months before we get to the 200 hour. There's nothing to it. The the impeller is not hard to change. The gear oil is not hard to change. The oil is not hard to change. Uh, the one thing I do every time when I'm unloading the boat, and I do this at the house, it's, it's got a hose bib in it. Screw a hose in it, let it run while I'm unloading the boat. Then I, once the boat's unloaded, I take a pressure washer, wash the boat down, and done. So it takes less than 30 minutes to be clean. So this, this is the, this is the boat. This boat will run in about eight inches of water. Uh, it does not have a tunnel, but it, it'll go very shallow. Those pontoons uh, force a lot of water up in it, and it'll allow you to run very shallow. And the best part about this is, you guys that are in fiberglass boats, you get one of those big dudes stuck on a sandbar, <laughs> you gotta wait till the tide to come in. Hopefully it's low tide when you run aground, because if you're at high tide and you're aground, you're in trouble. You can walk this one out. And I have done that a time or two. Another good thing about this boat is it doesn't take much to pull it. You can pull it. You can pull it with just about anything that has a tow hitch. I mean, you can pull it with a car if you wanted to. This will pull with a car. I've got a little Colorado with a diesel and it doesn't even know it's back there. So I can catch fish just like the boys in the $80,000 boats. I'm not saying I, I've had big boats, I've had little boats, and I find this is just so easy to launch. You can launch it by yourself. You can carry three people on it. It doesn't fish three people very well, uh, but if you're just going wading or duck hunting, you can put all your gear on here and get where you're going and get out. As you can see, the hull is painted in a, a olive brownish color. You can see what it looked like before he stripped it. He stripped it, primed it, and painted it. And you know, if it gets paint knocked off of it, like right here, it's just not a big deal. I've answered most of you guys questions if you have any more please shoot me a comment below and I'll get back to you soon I hope you enjoyed the video please like subscribe have a great day